Warriors. Now. Start. Now. Warriors. For the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. I say we warriors. For the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. I say we warriors. For the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. I say we warriors. For the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. Dave Allred, a no-holds barred middleweight matchup that I've been dying to see. It's a rematch, Jerome Chavez Hatch. He's going up against Rob Sandstrom, the Sandman. What are your thoughts on the fight? Whew, I think we're looking at two opponents who both like putting theirs on the canvas. Hatch, he tends to do it with his fist. Sandstrom tries to take it with his takedowns. I am so excited to see how this one turns out. I couldn't agree with you more. I definitely think this is a grappler versus a striker match, and we'll see which style wins. When you say grappler, Phil, I think you're talking more wrestler versus uh, striker because Robert Sandstrom, very good wrestler, man. Some of the stuff that I've seen from him in the room, very, very impressive in terms of takedowns and his wrestling ability. His grappling, though, his submission, maybe just a little bit not quite on par with that. A six foot, 385 pounds. Good looking prospect, though. This kid's a pretty good athlete. Yeah, I definitely agree with that assessment, Mike. You're right. He is mostly a wrestler, not a grappler. But this kid, Jerome Chavez Hatch, he's just a brawler, Mike. He's just, as they say, a tough SOB. 5'11", 185 pounds, Chavez. He'll mix it up with anyone. He just has that, that iron worker strength, and he gets his grips on you, and it's hard to get out of. I'll tell you, though, my favorite part of Chavez coming to fight in the show is his crowd, man. He brings a party, party group, brings a bunch of people that come here, love the fights, and the energy level in the room. Anytime he comes is a lot of excitement, just like that right there. Chavez comes out winging the big punches. Well, I think he clipped uh, Sandstrom there, and this is actually a rematch, Mike. Sandstrom defeated Chavez uh, in, a, in a pretty quick fashion in the first round in their first fight, but looks like Sandstrom's in a little bit of trouble here. Well, it, I, I don't recall it being quite quick fashion. I remember it being a pretty good matchup initially. These guys kind of winging at it. Sandstrom, a bit of an unknown at the time, and nobody expected him to really have his way with Chavez, but he has that wrestling ability right there. Nice uh, suplex right there uh, by Robert Sandstrom. Yeah, that was an awesome suplex there, Mike. Robert Sandstrom, definitely uh, a very good wrestler, but. Uh, Chavez, he doesn't care. Yo, he's working ah, on a nice key team here. It's on tight, too, if he can get his legs around and pull him into his guard. But he's just looking to pinch his head off. And, you know, he's just about strong enough to pull that off. Sandstrom getting his head out, though. Oh, maybe Chavez has been working a little technique, Mike. No, I trust me, he hasn't. <laughs> this kid does nothing but work. And he works all the time. And wow, he's landed some big shots right here. He's got Sandstrom on his heels. Sandstrom wisely shooting in to close the distance, but he took some shots. Well, he's working that uh, guillotine uh, anaconda choke there, Mike. I think they actually call that a 10 finger guillotine, but well, I think he's got it. I think wow. he might have it. He's got to pull Sandstrom into his guard, though. He's got to finish the move off. He's got the Squeezerowski part in, but he's got to put the rest of his body behind it. And that's why I say he doesn't have any training behind him. He just a rough and tumble knucklehead type of kid yeah he is mike but he's a he's a tough customer if you guys got to come see this kid fight live so much intensity when jerome hatch fights it's yeah, unreal he's not i guess i should say he's a rough and tumble kid but he's got freakishly strong arms he's he's a freakishly strong kid and and really you're right man you gotta you gotta watch out for this kid lonnie foster yelling at him right there. you can't knee to the head when you're on the ground and he got a good scolding from the legend right there well sandstrom's just pouring blood out mike but he got a nice uh what do you call that, uh, like front headlock reversal there, Mike? Uh, I call it a bloody nose is what he's got. <laughs> well, he's bleeding everywhere, Mike. This fight might be in danger of getting stopped. Wow, well, there's so much blood coming out. You're absolutely right. Chavez certainly leaving his mark. And, boy, it looked like he just about got that reversal there. Sanson with great hips. He's a good wrestler and, and saved that position. Just kind of hanging on to Chavez's head and arm there. Yeah, Chavez trying to get a reversal with his legs over uh, Sandstrom's head. Sandstrom having none of it, working a front headlock here. And, uh, ooh, Sandstrom's got a key lock on, Mike. He this sure could be does. all she wrote. Oh, Jerome Hatch rolls over. <laughs> Jerome ain't going away quite that easily. You've got my arm, but I'm going to punch you places that you probably never have been punched before. And finishing the round off with a nice flurry 
is Jerome Hatch. And really, you see that's the end of the first round. Jerome Hatch clearly, in my opinion, winning round number one. Uh, I, I don't agree. I don't disagree with you on that, Mike. He's uh, he he kind of took uh, Sandstrom to the woodshed there. Well, uh, Mike Crispin, the Sugarloaf, going to take things back to the drawing board there for Robert Sandstrom. But Jerome Hatch, his biggest thing has always been conditioning. I think the kid even smokes. If he could put down the cigs and get into training, he could be something special. Stick around. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, round number two on your way between Robert the Sandman Sandstrom and Jerome Chavez Hatch. You see right there, both these guys a little bit tired after round number one. It was a pretty grueling round, Phil. Yeah, it was, and I think Rob was like, hey, I'm tired of you hitting me. I'm just going to take you down. And uh, both are very unofficial scorecards. Phil and I both saw Jerome Hatch Chavez winning round number one. He was just too overpowering. He did see some really nice things out of Robert Sandstrom, but but Jerome Hatch and just the power and strength from this kid seemed to have uh, been the better man in the first round. But you see that that uh, Chavez looking a little more peaked, a little more tired than he was in round number one. Yeah, he might have uh, spent himself a little bit, Mike. Uh, definitely Chavez in round one controlled the striking and uh, did more damage. Uh, Sandstrom scored a couple takedowns, but didn't really have Hatchet in trouble. Now he's got his back, though. He's looking for a hook. He's got one hook in. Let's see if he can finish his choke. Oh, man. Chavez, how many times has he been stung by the choke? And it doesn't look like he's going to get out of this one. Phil. Yeah, I think this is the way their first fight ended, Mike. But uh, Sandstrom working that choke, I think this could be it for uh, old uh, Chavez. Well, Chavez is no quitter. He's not just going to roll over for you. You're going to have to earn it. And you see right there, how strong is this Chavez kid? Just reaching up and pulling his arm off and throwing it off his head. He, man, like Mike, you hit it on the head. You know, he's an iron worker. He works all day with uh, heavy objects. And... Uh, He's strong. I mean, he just got heart and he's strong, and sometimes that's all you need in the fight game. But right now, that's not doing him any good getting this guy off his back. Well, you know, you see Jerome. I like the fact he's he's got you're on his back. You've got a choke sinking in, and he's punching you backwards. You know, this kid never uh, has anything but fifth gear in mind when he uh, when he gets out here into the cage. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I would love to see him get just a little bit of technique, man. This kid could go so far, Mike. He could go so far. Wouldn't we all? Robert Sandstrom biding his time here. It looks like he might be a little fatigued as well. And it looks like he's kind of getting his wind back and looking for that explosion or something. Uh, both these guys looking very winded here in round number two. Well, even though Sandstrom's in an extraordinary good shape, Mike, once you get punched and you start bleeding, you start losing gas. Well, yeah, you know, and he has lost a lot of blood. No question about it, but you look right here, man. Is, is uh, Jerome fatigued or what? Yeah, Jerome's fatigued. His arms are all the way down, but look at Sandstrom. This is, oh, you know, man. neither one of them is able to keep their arms up, but Hatch still throwing bombs. <laughs> Hasn't connected with any in this round, though. Sandstrom's done a good job avoiding them and shooting in for the takedown. Well, that certainly uh, is not by, by lack of effort because he was swinging for the fences there had Hatch landed any of those punches this fight would have been over and you see right here where this is a much better place for Robert Stanstrom right down there on the ground where he can work his wrestling ability and and hopefully Jerome wears himself out to where he can get around on top and do something well I tell you Mike the cage crews earning their beer money tonight look at all the blood in there this is a mess <laughs> this is what we call a blood fest no doubt about it Lonnie Foster stepping in and breaking him up for the end of round number two, and there is blood everywhere. See the lovely Antoinette bringing round number three our way, and you know, I don't know if these guys have much left in the tank. They were tired coming out for round number two. You see right there, both of them very fatigued coming out for round number three. Well, I can tell you there was a battle in there, Mike, because, oh. I mean, you see the cage crew's exhausted just from having to actually work and clean up that cage. Oh, very nice. You Sandstrom, he's too tired to even hold his hands up, and that's not a very well-advised tactic when you're going up against Chavez because Chavez can knock you out with a single punch, but right here, Sandstrom winding up in full mount and... Man, we've counted Jerome Hatch out a few times already, but this is a bad spot to be in this early in the round. Yeah, it is, Mike. I can tell you, man, this Sandstrom is an exceptional wrestler. He's got good takedowns. Uh, it's almost automatic once he fully commits to one, but uh, Chavez trying to roll and get out of there, but now he's uh, stuck in a choke. Rolled himself right into a choke, and I don't know if he's got the wherewithal to get out of this one. It, uh, you know, <laughs> it's starting to sink on there pretty tight. You can see his face turning purple. Oh, he's got yeah. that in there, Mike. I don't know. I think this is all she wrote. 
Oh, he got out. <laughs> Chavez, we rode off Chavez one more time and he came out. Bet against this kid. He has got more heart, more grit than any 10 guys ought to have. And like you said, man, if we could get him into the gym, if he didn't live so dang far away, I would, I, I might even go personally drive this kid to the gym. I want him on my team. Man, he, he's a tough customer, Mike. And you're right, you know, if he gets to the gym, he's, the future's uh, wide open for him. But this Sandstrom kid's definitely been spending his time in the gym. Sandstrom's actually a baseball player. I think he's moving to the uh, Czech Republic for about a year to play baseball. But apparently he did some wrestling when he was in yeah, school, apparently too. he did. You know, Chavez, if he didn't have that cutie pie little girlfriend of his, maybe we could talk him into spending the time to driving up here for practice. But I can see why he stays home. Yeah, if you've ever seen Nikki, you know why he stays home. Yeah, she's a little doll, and uh, right here he's wishing he was in her arms rather than Robert Sandstrom, no doubt about it. He's pretty much over this. I mean, doing a great job, still battling out, still fighting to the bitter end, but he's taking some shots there, Phil. Oh, I love the way Sandstrom kind of took away his uh, arm there, Mike, with a, uh, oh, he's going to get this arm locked. <laughs> Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> did I count him out again too soon? Yeah, you did. Don't bet against my boy Chavez, man. This kid, there's no never say die. But oh, he's in the arm lock now, there, Phil. Oh, it's this is it. This is I'm calling it right now, Mike. It's it. That's it. Well, what? Well, you were wrong once again, oh my Phil. Heck. <laughs> but now the triangle's oh. done, and that is it. And I just think that was a fatigue tap more than anything. Great transitions on the part of Robert Sandstrom. Certainly don't want to take anything away from him, but Chavez just said, you know, enough's enough, man. I am just pooped. Now, you know there's been a battle, Mike, but neither one of the fighters can get to the uh, to, to their feet. There's no cage climbing or celebrating <laughs> after this fight. Both these guys dragging their butts back to their corners. Excellent fight. Both these guys came out here and showed us a lot of heart tonight. That was a great fight, man, between both these guys. Great Clips is home of the $10 haircut. Also pick up $10 UCE tickets only at participating locations. All right, well, Chavez, that was an impressive fight. Why don't you give me your thoughts on it? Well, you know, I tried to stand up and tried to stand up. Um, I actually took everybody's advice, did a little training. Sat in the sauna yesterday for about three hours, lost 10 pounds just to make the weigh-ins. But uh, I mean, I just need to get some training on the ground. You know, I really enjoy coming out here and, you know, you guys show me up against people who train and train and train and I don't train, so I like to come out and see what I can do, but it's about time for me to get some training. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, your striking looked great. You had him rocked a few different times and you even started doing some chokes uh, with a little bit of work. I could see you going quite a few places. That was a show you put on for everybody. I'm sure this crowd really appreciated it. You know, I appreciate you guys coming out. The little roll on the arm bar, that's, uh, you gotta thank St. Pierre on that. I watched that one on the UFC fighting. So, and, uh, oh, Rich Franklin, my bad. But uh, anyways, I really wanna come out and, you know, come out here again as soon as you guys can get me in again, so. Celerity Investments, if you have a vision, we can assist. Go to investwithcelerity.com to find out how. Rob Sandstrom, last time you fought that kid, it was over really quick. He's an improved fighter, man. What were your thoughts on the fight, bro? Uh, I should've stayed down. Would have been a lot easier fight. But yeah, I got rocked up start. Took about two and a half rounds to get my head and then choked him out, so yeah. All right, so uh, what's your plans for the future, Rob? I heard you're uh, going to the Czech Republic or something like that. What's up with that? Uh, playing some baseball out there in the Czech, but that's my sport, but this is for fun, so yeah. Dave, that fight did not disappoint. That was a war, that was a battle. That was brutal. There were times where I thought that Sandstrom was done. He showed a lot of heart there, sinking in that choke in the third. Yeah, really, you know, Jerome Hatch lost that fight, but there's no loser in that fight. That was such a good fight. Jerome Hatch, he continues to impress, but Rob Sandstrom, man, that kid's a legit fighter. Dave Allred, the Twinkies back, Brian Anderson. It's a no holds barred lightweight matchup. He's going against Zach Stansworth. What are your thoughts on the fight? You know, there was a time where I thought the Twinkie was just a food I really didn't like. Turns out to be a fighter I love to watch. This guy, he always brings it, and he brings that patented backflip if he wins. So I really am excited to see how this one shakes out. Should be an exciting fight, we'll see. I'm more privy to Tiger Tails and Ding Dongs than Twinkies, but Brian Anderson is a guy that I've grown to like quite a bit myself. Zach Stansworth, another guy, he's been uh, kind of a fixture in the show in 2008. 
Yeah, he has. Mike hasn't uh, won too much, uh, but uh, he's always coming to fight. Not by lack of trying. Five foot nine, 154 pounds. He's a ground and pound stylist out of Logan, Utah. Calls himself the Lightning, but so far things haven't paid off for him so well as you mentioned, Phil. In fact, he's already lost once to this very man. Oh, the Twinkie, the Twinkie. What more can you say? Twink Dizzle, five foot ten, 155 pounds, uh, out of Orem, Utah, training out of the Ultimate Combat Training Center, among other places. He's kind of made his way around, but uh, some of those other places said, if you train here, you can't fight in that show. So you know what he said? Then I won't train here. Oh, well, you know, Mike, most of these guys just want to be on TV. <laughs> I like Twinkie, man. Good for him. He's a good kid and a touch of the gloves. And here we go. Time for the fisticuffs. And so far, just a stair job. <laughs> yeah, Twinkie uh, has definitely shown a lot of improvement lately in his fights, Mike. Uh, Zach Stansworth, on the other hand, he's been tapping a lot. Let's see if how much he's improved. Oh, nice takedown there by Stansworth. Very nice takedown. But you found yourself in the guard of Twinkie. And I believe the last time these two fought, being in the guard of Twinkie was not a very good idea for Zach. Yeah, the Twinkie has uh, got deadly Deadly submissions, Mike. Boy, he certainly does. Been training over there in Mike Colby's class at the Ultimate Combat Training Center, picking up a thing or two. And you see right here where he's got, he's trying to work a little squeeze the He can't decide if he wants to go arm lock or a triangle here. Oh, I think uh, Stansworth uh, finally getting tired of getting tapped out, and he's learning a little submission defense. And oh, big slam there, Mike. Perfect job. Nice job by Zach Stansworth. And he's going to show Twinkie a thing or two. Uh, had his back for a moment. Uh, lost that position, but did a great job of getting out of that position. Yeah, Twinkie say, hey, wait, come back here, ding dong, I got you. <laughs> I got you. And uh, a little half mount, half guard situation here where these guys are kind of just hanging on, both of them not really looking to improve, doesn't look like. No. Well, they got the lovely Nikki there in the front row to look at, Mike. Why would they want to go anywhere? I wouldn't leave that corner either, man. In fact, can we take the camera back over that direction? Uh, I don't have control of the camera, but what I can do is talk, and right now what's going on is not a whole lot of nothing, but Twinkie passed the full mount, Mike. All right. Uh, well, yeah, he certainly did, and now he's sitting up and bumming away, and uh, boy, Zach, there's a lot of time left on the clock, my friend, and yeah, Dave very quick to step in there, but I don't think it was like overly quick because it didn't look like Zach was going to move at all. <laughs> and, Twinkie, man, he's a bouncy guy today. Dave was just in a hurry to make sure that we got to see the backflip, Mike. Well, Dave's in a hurry to get somewhere. I don't know where, but he uh, ended that one quickly. And Twinkie, big smile on his face. He's going to go and flirt with the girls and talk about their underwear once again. Dave Allred, the Gator, the PG Strangler, whatever he's calling himself <laughs> this week. Jason Allgaier's back, and he's on about an 18-fight losing streak. He's going up against the first timer, Mike Risher, the lunchbox. This kid's a tough kid, though. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I'm really impressed with the lunchbox. Just his sheer size, I think, is going to give the gator, the strangler, however you call him, it's going to give him some fits. But uh, it looks like this time uh, the gator's been backing up with talk with a little bit of walk. You can tell he's been in the gym a little bit. Yeah, the gator's been training. The lunchbox been training. This should be a battle. We'll check it out. Phil, I don't know why you're so rough on the PG Strangler, Jason Auger. He's a good guy, and he's a guy that's just maybe, maybe he's missing a few screws, but don't, aren't we all? But uh, the lunch puck, Mike Richter, he says, you know, I'm going to cut my teeth here. I'm going to find out, do I belong in this cage or not? As so many people have against the Gator at six foot three, uh, he's a pretty tall kid going up against the Gator, and, and you know, Gator, he's just the Gator. He is, Mike, but he's telling us all. He's telling everyone backstage, on the street, wherever you want to hear it. He's not the Gator. He's a strangler now. Well, he's always going to be the Gator to me. However, he is actually training with the team, which I think is huge for him. Training down with Team Samurai X. Wow, look at the disparity in height there. The lunchbox, you're going to have to pack a lunch just to get up to his head. Well, the lunchbox, he's on top of the world, Mike. His first MMA fight, he's got a new girlfriend. What could go wrong for this guy? Well, losing his first fight could go wrong, but it doesn't look like he has any plans of that happening. Gator with a nice takedown and a slam to start things off. But lunchbox, he's a gamer, I'll tell you that. Oh, the lunchbox can scrap, Mike, but uh, right now he just got slammed by the Gator. I'm even slammed again by the Gator. That's the double slammerooski by the Gator, and we haven't seen that since fight number... 17, a long time ago for Gator. Oh, he's locking on a, a choke here, Mike. This could be it. 
Yeah, you know, we've talked about this. I can't tell you how many times when the Gator fights, but I have never seen the kid have a mark on his face. I've never seen his hair get messed up in a single fight that he's been in. This guy is he's a he's an anomaly. Yeah, he is, Mike. He's like uh, unbreakable, you know. I mean, he's been beat, but you're right. He's never been injured. It's, he's it's, unmarkable. Yeah, unmarkable. Unmarkable PG Strangler, but uh, he uh, had uh, the lunchbox in some trouble there. Now the lunchbox throwing down some bombs. The lunchbox saying, I'm going to put some marks on this kid. You rest assured, but, oh, I might have forgot about my arm. Oh, he's probably spending too much time thinking about punching in about his new girl, and he almost got arm barred there, Mike. Who's his new girlfriend? Uh, Jenny, Jenna mean something. I don't know. She's trouble. I've never heard of her. She's a distraction, Mike. I've never heard of that girl. Well, here goes the lunchbox. He's on a side mount here, trying to work his way to side mount on uh, the PG Strangler. We got to give uh, Jason a little bit of credit, though. He has went to a team now. He's training with the team. He's not training independently. Uh -oh. he's, but, mounted, uh, he's mounted, though. mounted now. <laughs> he's mounted and he's pressed against the cage. But you know what? Lonnie Foster saw something he didn't like. And I think what happened there is Mike Risher pulled onto the cage that assisted him in gaining that position. That was an excellent call by Lonnie Foster. And just for a point of note, I know who Jimmy is. She's a fixture at this show. She's here every week. She's a lovely girl. And uh, we're just giving her a hard time. Right there, Lonnie Foster taking a point away. Oh, I think she's distracting the lunchbox. I wouldn't I think, expect him to come out and commit two fouls. Yeah, you know, Jimmy, you got to let this guy go before he fights, man. And right now, he's just thinking about you, and he's not thinking about the Gator. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a little disappointed that he got those fouls, Mike. But he's uh, he's definitely trying to fight and take the fight to Jason Allgaier. But, oh, now he's past Jason's guard. Well, you find yourself down early in the fight. You got a point taken away in three-round fight. That's very difficult to overcome. So the lunchbox certainly has his work cut out for him. I see him winning this round so far. I don't know about you, Phil, uh, but you know the best he can do is come out of this round with a draw. Yeah, I might be a little remedial in my arithmetic from West Jordan High, but yes, that's the best he can do right now. Don't be using big words like remedial either, Phil. I know you don't know what that one means, so. I saw it I, in a magazine. <laughs> I don't know who you're fooling at home, but pretty good action here in the early goings. And, and that's one thing you can say about Jason Allgaier fights. They're usually, there's action in them. They just don't last that long typically, but we're going to see round number two, it looks like, in this one. The Gators made it to round numero dos. You know, we should do a study and find out how many extra rounds the Gator has actually gone into, but Gator looks much improved. There's no doubt about it right here in the lovely Angela bringing round number two our way. And it is, believe it or not, Phil, round number two. Oh, here we go. Let's see if the lunchbox is still distracted or if he's going to come out throwing the bombs that he says he has. Well, he seems to have, wow. I, I, it really surprised me when a guy has a six foot, or excuse me, a six inch reach advantage, shoots in like that. He had, really, I think that was a flawed strategy. He landed that first punch when he came out. He should have stayed standing and striking gig against the PG Strangler. Holy and, cow, well, it's all over. That's why they call him the PG Strangler. That thing went on and it went on fast. And Mike Risher, boy, he was tapping almost as soon as they hit the ground. That was a tough one, but wow, the losing streak is over. He's the no PG longer Strangler. the Gator. He's back. Back on the winning track, and he's feeling pretty good about that one. And I'm, I couldn't be happier for the kid. Dave Allred, a no-holds barred middleweight matchup between one of the top up-and-comers in the sport, Nate Girard. He's going up against the Sugar Loaf, the whitest white guy you will ever find that's never seen the light of day or a tanning booth. He also doesn't believe in jiu-jitsu. He's an anti jiu -jitsu. That could be problems going up against a, such a stud wrestler like Nate Girard. Absolutely, and Nate Girard's not only a stud wrestler, but he's undefeated in the UCE. So I would say Crispin definitely has his hands full, especially if this goes down to the mat. But Crispin has those heavy hands, and if he can keep it on the feet, there's a good chance he can end this pretty quickly. Yeah, Dave, I agree with you. This is kind of a striker going up against a grappler matchup, and we'll see who wins. Phil, once again, making up words, the anti jiu side, but this one actually makes some sense. Mike Christman, he doesn't believe in doing that silly old jiu-jitsu stuff. He just likes banging his ass on a fence. <laughs> Mike, he's putting his faith in the Lord's hands. Robert puts that fence together. Mike that Christman. thing could collapse. What do you think it's Sugarloaf? Five foot seven, 185 pounds, and I'm not really sure what that ass into the fence move prepares you for, but look at this kid, Nasty Nate. This kid 
My God, he is a specimen. Five foot eight, 152, coming down from Vernal, training with Unbroken Circle, and Unbroken Circle, these guys have been doing their thing. Yes, they have, Mike, and this is definitely, mark my words, our top prospect in the show right now, Major Art. Uh, well, don't speak so fast. Mike Crispin says, wait a minute, I've been training for this thing. I think I've got something to say about this, and uh, he says, uh, I'm going to come out here and show you right now. Nate Gerard is not going to take me down. Well, I'd like to see the Sugar Loaf come out and just start throwing bombs because this is what was going to happen. Well, right down to the ground, Mike. Well, he didn't I, get a chance to get off. You remember how he said he's not going to take me down? Well, that, that didn't last very long. Not only did he take you down, he took you down, and he's mounted on you very early in the round. And this is a bad spot to try to get out of with so much time left. This is a horrible spot for uh, Sugarloaf, and I really expected Sugarloaf's positioning to be much better than this, Mike. He just uh, gave up his bag, Phil. Yeah, he's looking like a rookie on the ground. I guess, you know, he doesn't believe in jiu-jitsu. I'll tell you what, you know, I give Mike Crispin credit for wanting to take the challenge and fight the toughest guys around, but right now his head's getting a little light. <laughs> he's, he's, oh, Sugarloaf. Sugar. You got to believe in jiu-jitsu. You got to believe in it. And he just doesn't, and uh, he's going to pay the price for it right now. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, especially oh, he got it, out of it. He, he didn't get out of it. Nate just kind of adjusted and got back up, and he was squeezing his head off a minute, but he said, you know, I think I want to punch this kid. He's been doing a good job of trying to make things difficult, but I think he's just delaying the inevitable here. Yeah, I really think he is, Mike. I, uh, I know the sugar loaf is all. Oh, he's turning purple here, Mike. That's well, it. Tappity, tappity, tap, tap, tap. Sugar loaf had enough. I saw him looking for uh, Nate Gerard, whose feet was crossed down there, looking to try to submit him there, but didn't quite get that. And, and you know, there's the uh, end result of that. He got choked silly. Nate Gerard uh, getting his hand raised there. And boy, that was really a lot quicker fight than I anticipated. Certainly quicker than he anticipated. That was very light work for him. And I, the future for this kid is just remarkable. Oh, for sure, Mike, for sure. Personalize your crotch footwear to creatively express your individuality. Choose from more than 1,100 designs at crotch.com. Nasty Nate Gerard. I, I've been saying this every time I see you in here. You're going places, man. You're, you're uh, top of the food chain material. What were your thoughts on the fight with Sugarloaf? That's a tough kid over there. That's a scrapper. You know, he's been winning and losing a little bit, but he's been winning. That's a tough kid. What were your thoughts? Well, he didn't break my nose like he said he would, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, I think it went good. Game, game plan went well. So just was patient, got it done, so it went good. Nate, thanks for being part of the experience. Anyone you need to shout out, anything you need to say? Yeah, my family who came. Uh, uh, risen, uh, unbroken circle down in Vernal. I just want to say I love you, Grandpa, and you're a true warrior. Man, oh man, that Nate Gerard. We're going to have to bring someone in from out of state to fight him. He just ran through the sugar loaf. The sugar loaf's kind of at the top of the food chain right now. Yeah, you know, I have to give it up to Nate Gerard. He did not let Sugarloaf get into his game at all. And he even showed a teeny bit, maybe just a teeny bit, of stand-up for a second. And when that got down to the ground, it looks like he just overwhelmed him completely. All, all good points for uh, Mike Crispin getting in that fight, but you have to really give it up to Nate Gerard and his sheer dominance in that fight. Yeah, you really do. I mean, Nate Gerard, he's, he, I think he's the top prospect in UC right now. Sugarloaf. You got like five jujitsu classes a week at your gym. Take one, take one. <laughs> Dave Allred, a no holds barred featherweight matchup with a blast from the past. Not one, but two of them. We've got Eddie Zimmers back. I didn't know where he went to. He's going up against Elijah the Luna. I know, you know, I thought the Zimmerman had gone extinct like the dinosaur, but he has come back and he says he's coming for the win. De Luna, I don't know too much about him myself. I know he's fought a couple times here and apparently he's got some pretty slick submissions. Yeah, I'm excited to see these guys fight. This is definitely a blast from the past and uh, I I'm gonna enjoy this. The reason this one is so enjoyable because you can really think back in, in the ultimate combat because we've been around so long. There have been kind of eras that uh, have come through the ultimate combat. And Elijah DeLuna was part of an era, and Eddie Zimmer was part of an era. And it's really great to see these former eras come here and, and clash here in the modern day ultimate combat. Five foot seven, 145 pounds is Elijah DeLuna, but uh, Eddie Zimmer, man, he's just tough as nails. Oh, and he's sweet as sugar, Mike. This kid can fight. I'm so excited to see this fight. 
He is one of those kids that just on a street, you know you'd have to kill him if you wanted to win a fight against him. He is five foot nine hundred and forty five pounds and what a great matchup this is. The level of excitement in the room because you see some fans that haven't been out since these two eras fought. So once again, it's just really an exciting uh, atmosphere here at the show. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, excitement in the air, Mike. Uh, they, they even <laughs> were too excited. They messed up the touch glove. Oh, oh shoot! And then man. Sugar popped him on it. I might touch a glove. I might not. Then I will and smack it right in your oh, mouth. Oh, Sugar! I, you know, I don't uh, attribute that to anything but nerves. I think both these guys they they wanted to touch gloves. And they didn't know, and, and that was just nerves getting shaken out for not being in the cage for so long. I don't think that was any reflection on sportsmanship, but. Certainly, DeLuna didn't take it that way. Oh, DeLuna going for the knee bar. Oh, man. Oh, he's got Eddie in the knee bar. Unbelievable. Oh, the knee bar. Uh, oh, he got out. DeLuna looking very sharp on the ground, Mike. <laughs> he was certainly looking sharp, but uh, Zimmer's got seems to have a counter for everything DeLuna's thrown at him thus far. I don't know if he's got a counter for this one, though, though. Oh, he looks like he's getting choked, and this could be the end of it, Mike. Wow, man, you're, you you wait this long to come back to the cage. You don't want to see it end this quickly. And and really, uh, DeLuna, obviously, he's been doing something while away because I don't remember him being quite the submission expert as he's looking at right here. He was a tough kid. He was a good wrestler, and he had a little submission, but he's certainly been doing something in the off time. Yeah, Mike, he's uh, probably got some uh, jiu-jitsu DVDs or something, Mike, because his jiu-jitsu's looking good. He might have picked up those Walt Bayless videotapes where you can learn how to do this jujitsu right on videotape. Might have got those right off of eBay, Mike. Very nice, very nice. But uh, whatever he's done, it's working. And uh, Eddie Zimmer, he's a very composed kid, though. If, if DeLuna doesn't have the conditioning, he's going to be in trouble. Because I remember Zimmer always was that guy that would take you to the third round and then hurt you. But man, you got to get to the third round first and you give Elijah DeLuna position. This is where he always was tough is, a, is a ground and pound. Oh, and DeLuna trying is about ninth submission of the round here. And, uh, ooh, that one's tight, Mike. That one is tight. I think we're going to see a tap. Nope. Kind of, oh. well, no, that was kind of a funky arm bar there. You had arm bar, triangle, Oh, there he goes little... again. Man, he has really been uh, improving his ground game. But Zimmer doing just what he needs to do, and that is punch his way out of those positions. Oh, his jiu-jitsu is looking beautiful, Mike. Yeah, well, I, I would say it would look beautiful had he finished any of those. But Zimmer, once again, able to punch his way out of them. But it seems like every time they get in a scramble situation, that Elijah winds up in the better position. Yeah, oh, well, there he goes again. Another submission attempt, Mike. This one, he's got to get this. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Zimmer's just a tough kid. All these submissions seem like they were put on. I mean, it seems like they were locked into place, and then Zimmer just kind of roughs his way out of it. Very nice work from both men. Very good action but back and forth between the two fighters here in the featherweight division. Oh, DeLuna putting on a little bit of a jiu-jitsu clinic here, though, Mike. But uh, you're right, Zimmer's answered every one and got out of it. But uh, I'd like to see Eddie not getting put in these in the first place. Well, this clinic is going to take a little recess because uh, round number one is in the books. Certainly, round number one goes into the favor of Elijah DeLuna. That first round, he uh, very dominant all over the place offensively and uh, winning round number one on my scorecard. Round number two on your way. Eddie Zimmer's going to have to make some adjustments here. Yeah, he is, Mike. He can't continue to fight off those uh, submission attempts. Uh, I think he's going to get tired. Oh, nice Superman punch, but missed the mark. But DeLuna used it to set up to get uh, Zimmer's back. <laughs> that was actually an ugly Superman punch, if you ask me. It missed by a mile. But uh, he did almost get that position there. Right there, taking a big right hand by Eddie Zimmer. It was kind of a little Superman punch by Zimmer. Well, yeah. <laughs> But De DeLuna, man, what a what a good chin, because that punch landed very flush. And uh, boy, look right here, it didn't phase him a bit. He's got that arm lock on. Phil, I don't think this one's gonna he's gonna get out of this. Oh, one. I can't see how he. Oh my. Yeah, that's either tap or snap. And uh, wisely, Eddie Zimmer fit, uh, opting for the first rather than getting it snapped. And uh, Elijah DeLuna, man, what a very impressive return to the cage this was Raymond in fact I think it was a very impressive return to the cage for both these guys I think it was for both fighters too you're right Mike and uh, that's got to be some type of UC record for the most submission attempts in about a round and a half wow. that was incredible and the best Led Zeppelin impersonation man that was one hell of a big mouth right there <laughs> pretty happy about that fight and he should be 
Skull Candy, the official headphones of the UCE. Check out their complete line of headphones and accessories at SkullCandy.com. For those of you who don't know, this is an old school face who's been around for a while and uh, taking a break. Why don't you tell them why you came back tonight? I give it another shot. I watch, uh, you know, all the pros on TV. Of course, I think I can hang with them. I come in here, I lose this guy, so. Well, I don't think that's uh, any, I, I don't think there's anything bad about losing that guy. He looked, he looked really squirrely on the ground. Honestly, the two of you were rolling around like some tumbleweeds. So, um, well, why don't you tell everybody here a big thank you or anybody you wanted to talk to in particular. And thanks to all my friends that came. Thanks to all you guys. Sorry, it was a bad show. Come back, and uh, he's actually going to drop down to my weight class because I came up to his. So when he comes down to mine, we'll see how good he is. All right, well, I hate to say it. You were good, just not good enough. But we'll see you again, right? Yeah, of course. All thanks. Right. There is only one place to get all your favorite MMA gear, including UCE merchandise, and that is Against the Fence. Dude, your jiu-jitsu look good out there, man. What were your thoughts on the fight, bro? Oh, it was just, yeah, I was just scared, you know what I mean? So I just, I just let it come out, you know what I mean? I just let it come out, and I snagged an armbar, got lucky, and that was that. Well, you were definitely all over the place with jiu-jitsu, man. I, I was sitting uh, K-side. A lot of people were like, man, where's this guy training? That was good jiu-jitsu. What are your plans for the future? Are you going to take another few years off, or are we going to see you again soon? Uh, you're going to see me again soon. You know, uh, last time I was in here, my conditioning was down. It's up again. And uh, just a little disappointed I can't work some boxing a little more. So next time, maybe you'll see a little uh, banging on the feet. But, uh, hey, submissions is cool, too, you know? All right, well, your corner was yelling, fill the wrath, and uh, Eddie Zimmer felt the wrath tonight. Good job, man. Thanks for being part of the experience. Glad to have you back. Thank you, Phil. Good to be back. Dave, I, I've got to confess, that was some slick jujitsu. I mean, that, Elijah DeLuna looked good on the ground. Amazing. And I, I have to tell you, that uh, Zimmerman, he looked like a human Gumby. That man got out of the submission after submission, a win or lose. That was incredible to watch. And for people not too familiar with the ground game, they should pop in that tape to get a little bit of excitement about what jiu-jitsu is all about. Yeah, Elijah DeLuna, he definitely did jiu-jitsu, and that was, that was a heck of a performance out there. Dave, a main event I've been waiting a long time for. It's the return of the mullet. Mullet Nation. Mullet Nation is back, baby. He's going up against RVA, Patrick Upton. This should be a war. This is going to be amazing. Never underestimate the power of the mullet. He has just come back. He's got some fierce ability, but you can never, ever count Patrick Upton out of a fight. Both these guys, I know, are in good shape, and they're both experienced. So it's going to be nice to see how this all shakes out for him. I'm excited to see this fight. The mullet's been in Iraq fighting a war for our country, and uh, he's going to war tonight in the cage. I couldn't ask for more right now. Both these top guys spent a little time overseas in this uh, little endeavor we got going on over there. Patrick Upton been back for just a little while, but he certainly did his time. And you know, I, I think it's pretty dang cool that we get a couple of soldiers coming in here and and uh, representing themselves here in the Ultimate Combat. Patrick RBA Upton, 5'10", 150, living in the Rose Park area. Very soft-spoken kid. Yeah, he definitely is, Mike, and uh, he's been looking forward to this fight. These guys are friends, but they kind of wanted to duke it out, and he's back. The mullet is back, Mike. You know, and, and it's funny because mullet, he's a little quiet, but I wouldn't call him soft-spoken. This kid is one funny kid, six foot tall, 170 pounds. He's got a line for just about every situation. Yeah, he does, Mike. And in the whole, in the height of the mullet mania here in Utah, impossible to go to Walmart and not run into a girl that didn't know him. <laughs> impossible. Impossible to not run into a girl that didn't know him intimately at one point. But he settled down now, ladies. He's off the market. It's all, it's all over. He's, he's got a girlfriend now. <laughs> oh, and he's so whipped over, it's just ridiculous. Big right hand landing to start things off and finds himself up on top of RBA and uh, not a good place for RBA. Oh, no, definitely not. The now, point out here, these guys can't stand and strike here in this fight. They went for uh, unified rules. Looked like Mullet going for an ankle lock, though. Oh, he's, he's getting the 1090, Mike. He's got the 1090 heel hook. This is what made him famous, the oh. 1090 heel hook. This was patented by Mullet back in the day, and he lands it on Patrick Upton, it's over as fast as it started. Unbelievable, he brought the 1090 back, Mike. Wow, you go to Iraq, you don't learn any new tricks, you just go back to what you knew before, and 
the Moulet, the mullet, Matt Reigns. He's back and he's back in a big way. Very impressive because Patrick Upton is no joke, but he got that thing on. He got it on tight. I cannot believe he pulled off the 1090 in his return fight, Mike. I ah, could you not believe? Right there is part of the mullet nation, man. <laughs> They're here making all kinds of noise. This night was a lot of fun here at the Ultimate Combat, and boy, that guy right there, he's a lot of fun. We're having his after party tonight, so stick around for that. The mullet is back, Mike. I'm so excited. Got bronze, body bronze tanning has state-of-the-art tanning beds and home of the 30-second spray-on tan. Uh, give me your thoughts on the fight. Um, I thought that that was pretty gay and embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, Mullet, he's got that down, and you held that off for a long time. How's your leg feeling after all that? Uh, I think it's, I think it's a little up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may have gotten a little bit messed up tonight, but in our hearts, we love you. We want to see you again. Uh, anybody you want to thank? Um, well, I'd like to thank Mullet for fighting me. I know it was kind of unexpected for him. Um, I'd like to thank all my friends, um, my girlfriend, Sharice, um, Attitude Tattoo. Um, if you need a new tattoo, go check them out. 231 East, 2100 South. That's right. Even if you can't be a badass, you can look like one with those tattoos. Exactly. Any final thoughts about this? Um, I don't know. I think we should just do a kickboxing match. Kickboxing match. Well, Mike might be able to set something up for you. I hate to say this to you. I love you. You're a good kid. Tonight you were good, but just not good enough. Are you Army strong? Find out what it takes to be a soldier in the U.S. Army at GoArmy.com. <laughs> that in and of itself was a fight and a war every day. I don't think people understand what you're going through over there. But tonight you were in the cage, and it's back the 1090 heel hook. <laughs> I never thought I'd see it again. What were your thoughts on the fight, Mullet? Uh, my thoughts on the fight were, please God, don't let him knock me out. Um, I, was, I was scared. I didn't want to get knocked out of my first fight back. Uh, you know, I know RBA, he's a tough little bastard. He's a good friend of mine, and I love the guy to death. And I don't care what David said, he's always good enough. That guy is awesome. So, Mullet, I heard a couple rumors this might be your uh, retirement fight. Is this true? Is this, or is it like Donnie, your brother, retires every other fight? I, I wasn't actually going to retire. I was going to say I won't be back for at least a month or something like that. I got some schools I got to go to with the Army, but I'll be back. It's too much damn fun. Well, you could always be like the Green Lantern. There's a few of them. <laughs> Matt, you brought the 1090 back. You're back from Iraq. God bless you for be coming home safe. I mean, I know a lot of people are worried about you. I was worried about you. I had some nightmares about you, me and your close friends. I just want to thank you for fighting tonight, but I want to thank you for coming back in one piece because I was worried about you, man. There is a war going on over there. Yeah, thanks, Phil, man. I appreciate it a lot. It's, uh, it's really good to have supportive people back here. Um, I know, like, one of the biggest supports I had was from my girlfriend, Tia. She's here tonight, and uh, love you, honey. Thank you. And then also, real quick, if I could, I just want to give a shout-out to uh, Night Flight Comics on 6222 uh, South State Street. I spend like all my time there, get my hoodies and comic books. I'm a big nerd, but anyway, go check them out. They're awesome. It's the mullet, Matt Rage. He's back. We promised you a great show, folks, and we did not disappoint, did we? Dave Allred, thank you so much for uh, joining us in the Ultimate Combat this evening. Hey, I love it. I'm, I'm here every week, buddy. I'm happy to help. Well, come back anytime. Phil, man, what an incredible night of fights. Yeah, and it was highlighted by the mullet brought the 1090 heel hook back from Iraq. He brought it back to Utah, and he pulled it off on Patrick Upton. All right, we got sneaky tricks for you next week. The Ultimate Combat Experience right back. Same time, same place. We'll see you next week on the Ultimate Combat Experience. We are